Welcome, so in this one I'm going to show you how to find the harmonic conjugate of a function in the context of complex analysis, for example. So I'm going to have the following function here. u of x, y is equal to, say, x squared minus y squared. And you want to find v, which is the harmonic conjugate. First, let's just remind ourselves of the Cauchy-Riemann equations. So they look like this. Basically, f sub y is equal to i times f sub x. This stores the Cauchy-Riemann equations. It's a good mnemonic device. So what I mean by that is the following. You can expand these a little bit. So it's going to look like that. U sub y plus V sub y i has to be equal to i multiplied by, well, let's see here, V, or rather U sub x plus V sub x i. And then from these, you can relate the pieces to remember the Cauchy-Riemann equations correctly. So let me just write down the Cauchy-Riemann equations now. So based on this work right here, I will say that u sub y, let's think about that. On the right side, distribute the i over to the v sub x. So it's going to be i times i, which is negative 1. So it's going to be negative v sub x. That's the real part of the right side. So that's why this is negative v sub x, you see? And then also I have i times u sub x. The i stays, so that has to be equal to the imaginary part on the left side, which is v sub y. So in other words, v sub y has to be equal to u sub x. That's how I remember these Cauchy-Riemann equations. So with that in place, let's proceed. I can find u sub y. That's pretty easy here. So I have u sub y. I can differentiate x squared minus y squared. So when I differentiate x squared minus y squared with respect to y, that's going to give me negative 2y. But that negative 2y, according to this one right here above my head, that's also negative v sub x, you see? So for that reason, what I can say is that negative v sub x is also equal to negative 2y. Now if I look at this carefully, what I could do is anti-differentiate with respect to x. After I cancel off, of course, the negative from both sides here and here, that is, you see? So it's going to give you the following. Now v sub x is equal to 2y after I cancel off the negative. And then after that, I'm going to have v. So I'm anti-differentiating with respect to x only. I have v and then 2yx plus v of y. Why do you have to attach that function of y at the end? Well, the reason is the following. If what you see above me was differentiated or were differentiated with respect to x, it would have to get back to that 2y above my head. Well, the derivative of this function of y only with respect to x would vanish. And that's why over here, you have to have it attached. But now go over here for a second and look here. You also know that uh, let's see, v sub y is equal to u sub x, according to that equation. So, this is what you can do. You know u sub x. u sub x is equal to, come over here and differentiate with respect to x, the original u. So you have 2x. So it's going to be 2x, just like that. But keep something in mind here. This is the key step now. You see, this equation says that u sub x, I already know that, is equal to v sub y, which I don't know. But what I can do is come over here, look at that form of it, and I can differentiate that with respect to y. So it's going to look like v sub y is equal to 2x plus v prime of y. Now be very careful, like the 2yx, so when you differentiate with respect to y, the y goes away and only the 2x part stays, and that other piece, that phi of y, that also stays, but it turns into phi prime of y. We don't know what this phi of y actually is, so all we can do is keep it in a kind of purely symbolic form. But this is useful because now, when I go back here above my head, you see you have v sub y equals u sub x. u sub x is known, v sub y is known, so I can equate them. So it's going to look like this at the next step, essentially. That I have that 2x, so this is my u sub x, in other words, is equal to 2x plus phi prime of y, so this is that part, and on the right side, this part here, that's your v sub y. I'm equating them for that reason. And then after that, we'll take a look. When you solve, you'll have that this can be crossed off with this. One is opposite. When you move it over, so it's going to give you the following at the next step, that 0 is equal to, let's see here, v prime of y. So if you anti-differentiate this with respect to y, to get v of y, why would I want to do that? Because remember, back here above my head, you see we have phi of y. I need to have that. 
So here I'm going to do the following now. When I differentiate or anti-differentiate here, I will have that this is equal to k as phi of y. The reason is, again, think about this, right? If this function phi, since it's a function of y, if its derivative is equal to 0, then the function has to be constant. So again, imagine phi of y has the value 5. If you differentiate that, the derivative is 0. You see, that's all it is. So putting all of these pieces together, we can now essentially write down the following as the answer, that v, right here, is equal to, so I'm going to take this 2yx from below me in that position, so I'm going to write that below me here as 2yx plus, and then notice over here again that phi of y is k, so for that reason over here I'm going to put k, so plus k right here. And then this is the harmonic conjugate that we've been looking for. 2yx plus k. And that's it. So thank you so much. Please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video.